When we talked about the photoelectric effect, we showed how Einstein in 1906 showed that light had both wave and particle-like properties. So light had this, what is called the wave-particle duality shown by Einstein with the photoelectric effect because light behaves like a wave in many instances. In, it's an electromagnetic field, so it behaves like a wave in that case, but it also behaves like particles in certain instances, and the photoelectric effect is one example where light behaves like a particle. So following up on that, de Broglie in 1924 demonstrated the same thing for matter. So matter particles, which are just protons, neutrons, electrons, those sorts of things, that they that we think of them as particles, but they also have wave-like properties as well. So de Broglie sh sh posited that matter particles have a wavelength which is equal to Planck's constant over the momentum of the particle. So for a specific particle let's also remind ourselves that the momentum being mass times velocity. This is particularly important um, for those of you taking courses because there's a 99 percent chance you're going to be asked to calculate the de Broglie wavelength of some type of object on some homework set or exam. So uh, definitely be sure to understand this equation. So we see here that mass is on the bottom on the denominator so this matters very little for for very large objects. This matters primarily for very very light objects like electrons and nuclei. If you calculate the de Broglie wavelength of something like a baseball being thrown at 60 miles an hour, that's going to be something which is incredibly, ridiculously, immeasurably small. It's going to be of no practical consequence. However, if you calculate the de Broglie wavelength for something like an electron, which I'll leave up to you, knowing you can look up what the mass of an electron is, so the de Broglie wavelength you get for an electron moving at a you know, small fraction of the speed of light, you will get a wavelength which is comparable to that of x-rays. So this is a practical significance because we can use electrons to scatter just like x-rays would. Um, x-rays are used in x-ray crystallography to study um, the positions of atoms inside crystal structures so we can take a crystal and then resolve the positions of the atoms inside of it. This is primarily the way we determine what the what the structures of many solids look like, what the structures of many proteins or nucleic acids look like. But you can also use electrons to accomplish the same thing. And you can get sharper images because with electrons you can use electromagnetic fields throughout the course of the beam to get sharper images than you could with just x-rays. So some of the sharpest images we have today of microscopic objects come from um, electron microscopes and there are various types of electron microscopy of uh, various kinds of electron microscopy which are used every day by chemists, biologists, physicists, etc. Okay, so de Broglie was able to use this type of idea to propose an alternate explanation for why there is quantization in the hydrogen atom. So de Broglie said that you would have interference if the wavelength of an electron in the hydrogen atom was not equal to some integer value of its path around around the around the atom. If if it wasn't an integer value, then the then the wave would start to interfere on itself and the particle would disappear and there are all sorts of other mathematical consequences for why it's a bad idea that the matter would interfere with itself. So that leads to the condition that the length that the electron travels, its circumference around its circular path around the atom, equals an integer value of its wavelength. So a circ one, tr one ah, if I can spell wavelength, that would be great. So one time around the atom 
should be equal to either the wavelength, two times the wavelength, three times the wavelength, etc. So substituting this in, we get 2 pi r equals n times lambda. Then using the idea for de Broglie wavelength that we have up here, we had have 2 pi r equals n h over p. Substituting in that p is m times v, we have n h over m v. Then moving some things to the other side, we have um, m v r equals n h over 2 pi. Then this n h over 2 pi, we know h over 2 pi equals h bar, so then we can transfer this and make that uh, n h bar. And then on the other side here, this m v r, that's also equivalent to the angular momentum, L. So we have L, the angular momentum of a, an electron traveling around a circular path in the hydrogen atom is equal to a, an integer times h bar. And this is the exact same condition that Bohr used to calculate the radius and energy levels of the hydrogen atom. So this is, this is Bohr's condition as well. So both of these ideas lead to the same result and if you then re-derived the expression for the radius and the energy of the hydrogen atom levels, you would get the same result. So de Broglie was definitely on to something here with the fact that matter has wave-like properties, both useful for things like electron microscopy, but also gives us the same, it's consistent with the same types of ideas we see uh, posited for other reasons from people like Bohr.